everything we do and every thought we have ever had is produced by the human brain. But exactly how it operates remains one of the biggest unsolved mysteries. And it seems the more we probe its secrets, the more surprises we find. Neil deGrasse Tyson. The secrets of the brain are vast. But as much as we don't know about the human brain, we can see its handiwork everywhere. The world around us, from the chair we sit on, to the complex intricate machineries like computers, or rockets, or airplanes, are the result of using the human brain. The human brain is the most complex organ of the body. It is small enough to fit inside the human skull, but vast in its composition, comprised of billions of neurons. It's not millions, it's billions with a B. These neurons perform different functions according to their locations. The study of the brain has led to some remarkable discoveries in the past few decades. One such discovery is that of the functional magnetic resonance imaging, also known as fMRI. fMRI has revolutionized the world of medicine and especially the world of neurosciences. Now we can actually see what parts of our brain are involved in what function. When we perform an action like moving our arms or legs or grabbing an object, this activity is controlled by the motor area of the brain in the frontal lobe. And if we ask an individual to participate in a research and put him in an fMRI machine and ask him to perform the same actions like moving his arms or legs or grabbing an object, an increased activity will be observed on an fMRI result, suggesting more blood to that part of the brain that controls these movements. One of the most impactful findings for the use of fMRI is that of mirror neurons. Mirror neurons are a distinct group of neurons that fire both when an individual executes an action or just sees or observes someone else performing the same action. Thus, these neurons mirror the activity they see someone else performing. These neurons were discovered over 20 years ago in the macaque monkey's brain, in the inferior frontal gyrus, area F5 of the brain, inferior parietal gyrus. However, as of now, these neurons have been discovered in the premotor cortex, in the supplementary motor area, and the primary somatosensory cortex. The term mirror neurons was coined by the Italian neuroscientist Rizzolatti and his team, who first proposed the theory of the existence of these neurons because they believed that these neurons mirrored the action they see someone else performing. So why mirror neurons are important? What's unique about these neurons? According to the world-renowned neuroscientist V.S. Ramachandran, from the University of California, San Diego, I predict mirror neurons will do for psychology what DNA did for biology. Ramachandran believes that these neurons show how we all are connected with each other. I believe he is absolutely correct. The connection is so amazing that when one person performs an action in front of so many people, all of these people's brain region associated with that particular activity will show increased activity on an fMRI. The observer's brain believes that the observer is performing the action. Right now, you all can see me moving my arms and legs. If I were to place each one of you in an fMRI machine, and we record the findings, and increased activity will be observed on an fMRI result, your brain believes that you are moving, although you are not moving. How amazing. This is how 
we are connected through the powerful organ residing in our skull. These mirror neurons are not just confined to human beings alone. In fact, as I stated before, that most of these studies were conducted in the macaque monkey's brain. This shows that we are not only connected with our fellow human beings, but we are in fact connected with animals as well. This remarkable discovery has the potential to touch every creature on this planet. Let me tell you another interesting fact about these neurons, that these mirror neurons are not just confined or associated with movement alone. In fact, they are associated with touch as well. When we are touched, we feel this sensation of touch because of this somatosensory area of the brain. And when we see someone else being touched, our brain region of the somatosensory area of the brain is activated. Our brain believes that we are being touched. Obviously, we don't feel the touch. But if it's true, then why don't we feel the touch? What actually happens is that when we see someone else being touched, our skin receptors send a message to our brain telling that you are not being touched. Thus, they don't, thus we don't feel the touch. However, if somehow we remove this barrier of skin by paralyzing the skin or anesthetizing the skin, we will literally feel the touch on our skin. The same thing happens in people with phantom limb who don't have one of the limbs that when somebody massages their hand in front of them, they literally feel the massage. Why do you think that we tend to yawn when we see someone else yawning? <laughs> Let's try this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Another one. Research suggests that when we see someone else yawning, our mirror neurons in the frontal lobe are activated. That's why this happens. Have you also observed why we tend to cough in a room when we hear someone else coughing? Because <laughs> Because now the research suggests that there are auditory mirror neurons as well. We mirror the voices we hear. How amazing is that? This is how we all are connected with one another. This also shows or suggests why few artistic patients lack or feel the lack of connection or intimacy or hence lack learning. Many neuroscientists believe that prob probably there is a possibility that these patients lack these sophisticated neurons. However, it is still a new discovery. And it's very early to say something about it with confidence. Yet, this is for sure that these neurons show that we are really connected. Before I end, I would like to say that our mind does not believe that we are different. Our mind believes that we are one. Our mind does not believe in these differences of caste, color, creed, race, religion, and gender. When our mind does not believe in these differences, then why do we have these differences? Thus, we should remove these barriers of race, religion, caste, color, creed, and gender, and love each other and live together in harmony because we literally are connected. Thank you.